I love in that song where it says, I hear the sound where a victim declares victory. That there's a, there's a place where they claim. I don't, know, I don't know if you've, know, if you've kind of felt a common thread this morning through everything that we've done, but even with our offering confession, I declare it and I decree it done in the name of Jesus. I declare it. I decree it. I, I'm, I'm saying it with my mouth. I'm going to speak it as long as I can speak it. I want to talk to you this morning about what are you saying. And I want to give you some confidence this morning. To use what God has given you. How many of you ever talk to somebody and say, man, they talk a whole lot? How many is the person sitting beside of you? Man, would they, will they ever shut up? Can anybody say amen or are you just afraid to say amen? Man, they talk a lot. They, they talk all the time. What are you saying? The Bible says, let the words of my and the meditation of my be what? Acceptable. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, let everything that I say and everything that I'm thinking about and everything that I have down deep inside of me be acceptable to you, O God. But this morning when I'm talking about what are you saying, I'm asking you this. Any of you ever talk to yourself? Y'all are lying. Roger and Jennifer, we're thankful there's two. Do you ever listen to yourself? That's what I'm talking about. What are you saying to yourself? What are you saying to your spirit? What are you speaking about the situation that you're in? What are you saying that comes from the word of God that's going to help you be an overcomer in the situation that you're in? Now, Romans chapter 10 and verse 10 says this. Now, look at this. I'm, I'm sure that most of you in here, if you've ever gone to Bible school or ever gone to, um, to children's church, if you've ever gone to Sunday school, whatever, you, at one time or another, read Romans 10, 9, and 10. The back half of, of 10 says this. For with the heart the man believeth unto righteousness, but with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. With the mouth, God needs to hear the word come out of your mouth. He says that your confession is unto salvation. If you confess the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that he was raised from the dead, you will be what? Saved. Confession is unto salvation. So if you're in a place that you need saving, you need to begin to confess it. When the word is spoken, when when you hear a message, when when you hear a podcast, when you hear a book on tape, when you hear uh, preachers on the internet, when you watch YouTube, whatever that you do, when you hear those things, when it's spoken to you, it's a seed because faith comes by what? Hearing. And hearing by what? The word. When that comes, it gets in your heart. It germinates. It develops. It grows. And when the word has worked through the many processes that it needs in order to bring you to your life of abundance, it should come back forth out of your mouth. The sign, now look at this now. The sign of being well taught, well exposed, making great decisions, being transformed, ready to build, having your mind made up, ready to finish, is when... The conversation that you have been taught begins to become the conversation that you speak. Thanks, Mike. The sign of being, thanks, Mike. Hey, stay with me. Your $20 is in Teresa's purse when we finish. <laughs> you stay with us. The sign of being, look at this now, well taught, well exposed, making great decisions being transformed, ready to build, made up your mind to finish, is when the conversation that you've been taught becomes the conversation that you speak. What's in the well comes up in the what? The bucket. I believe that when you confess the word of God, it's like pulling the trigger and releasing a bullet. 
You make a decision on what you want to point the word of God to. You lock and load. You aim at the target. You sight what you're looking at and you squeeze the trigger and the word of God will do what it's designed to do. But it will not do it unless you pull the trigger of your mouth to let it do it. I had Lily in a studio one time. And we, we, we were singing a song, and, and there was a, uh, one of the girls that sings on our worship team, that, Be- Beverly, lives in Raleigh. She and Beverly and I were in there working on something. And it was a song that we needed Lily to come in and sing this part. And it was a little kid's part. And I needed her to sing it full voice. And Lily said, Papa, I don't know if I can sing that many. I can, if I can sing it that many times in a row, I needed her to do it like five or six times. And I said, Lily said, Papa, I don't know if I can do it six times in a row. I maybe can get one or two. I said, Lily, okay, look. Give me two good ones, and then you can sing the rest in your head voice. Instead of singing in full voice, you, I said, no, I said, you can sing the rest in your head. And what I was meaning, you can sing the rest of them with your head voice. Instead of singing, ba, you sing, ba, and sing it up in your head. So Lily sang the first two and killed them. The next two, she came out with the next one. I punched her in, and, the student, and Lily goes, <laughs> and I stopped. And I said, Lily, what are you doing? She said, I'm singing it in my head. (laughs) Same thing. The word of God that is down deep inside of you that you have heard from your ears and the faith has come can't just stay in that place. It's got to have an outlet. And the outlet is your mouth. Because when you begin to speak it, you begin to do what? Hear it again. You begin to believe it. According to the scriptures, your mouth is a sword. It's a sword. It's a weapon. It's a tool. And when you speak things, you give life to those things. Let me say it again. When you speak things, you give life to them. You need to hear yourself say it. That's why we do the declaration for offering. You need to hear yourself say, I'm the head and not the tail. I'm a victor, not a victim. I believe today that when I give, I sow. I don't sow sparingly because I don't reap sparingly. I sow with everything I am so I will reap bountifully. You need to hear yourself saying it. You need to stand on it. Your conversation that goes along with where you are now, what you've been taught, what you have down deep inside. It's how you release your faith. It's how the supernatural begins to take place. When you begin to understand that the power that backs the confession, there's power that backs the confession that you speak with your mouth. Now, I believe there are reasons, primary reasons, why confession of God's word works for you. And I want to show you some of these this morning. All right, you with me? So let's look. If you have your Bibles, turn to Romans chapter 4 and verse 13. Now, look at this. And you're going to think, what the world? This don't make any sense from what you're talking about. No, stay with me. Romans 4 and 13. It was not the law that Abraham and his offspring received the promise that he would be the heir of the world, but through the righteousness that comes by faith. It wasn't the law. It wasn't all the things he was trying to do right. It was through the righteousness that comes by faith. Faith comes by? And hearing comes by? Word. Now look at the same verse in the New Living Translation. Look at this. Clearly, God's promise to give the whole earth to Abraham and his descendants was not based on his obedience to God's law, but on a right relationship with God that comes by faith. That's how we develop our kingdoms, through a right relationship through God that comes through faith. It's important for me to to tell you this morning, you are the righteousness of God in Christ. You are a brand new creation in him. Let me tell you that again, because some of you are struggling with that one place of identity. You are the righteousness of God in Christ. Your identity is who you are. Again, if you look at that verse again, now let's say it again. Clearly God's promise came to the whole earth, to Abraham and his descendants. It was not based on his obedience to God's law, but on the right relationship with God that comes through faith. 
The relationship that you have with God and the righteousness of God in Christ, who you are, comes by hearing faith. It's what you're saying. It's not what you're doing. So he's saying, look, this right relationship with God, this righteousness that you get from coming through faith, it's not by obeying the law. It's by having faith in this. What Jesus already did and what Jesus has already made available for me and you. Patrick, somebody needs to run this morning. I just want to give you a heads up on that. <laughs> it's so funny, Patrick. We were with some friends the other day. Um, and, and they asked, said, Who, who's the guy that every once in a while walks around the church and acts like he needs to run? Jesus has made me the righteousness of God. And by my faith, I accept that and I receive that. What Jesus has done and what Jesus has made available for me, not by my own doing, but what Jesus Christ has done in the righteousness of God and by my faith, I accept what I am and I receive that. Because let me tell you this, until you figure that out, you're going to be stuck right where you are. This message does no good to you until you accept, I am the righteousness of God in Christ. And I'm not righteous by the things that I have tried to do and the things that I've done. I am that way because one man came named Jesus Christ and died on a cross for me. And through what he did for the Father and for all of us, I am who I am. Yeah. I am who I am. Not by myself. Now, so by faith, I declare I'm the righteousness of God. I'm made right through faith in Jesus Christ. Do you understand that? Now again, we're talking about confession this morning. So what does that have to do with it? So let's go back to Romans 10 again. So look back at Romans 10. But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise. Say not in thine heart who shall ascend to heaven. Oh, that is to bring Christ down from above. Or who shall descend into the deep. So don't say it in your heart. That is to bring Christ up again from the dead. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee even in thy mouth. And it's in your heart. That is the word of faith that we preach. So you get the word down deep inside of you, but it's got to come out of your mouth. Look at, look at it again in the New Living Translation. Look at this. But faith's way of getting right with God says, don't say in your heart who will go to heaven. It's Lily. Don't say who will go down to the place of the dead to bring Christ back to life again. In fact, it says the message is very close at hand. It is on your lips. And it's in your heart. And that message is the very message that we preach. Is the faith that we preach by. So a couple of things I want you to understand this morning. Two things, real quick. Your inheritance comes through, to you through the righteousness, which is through faith. Amen? You believe through faith. You confess with your mouth. So your righteousness comes through believing in what Jesus Christ has done for you and, can, and will continue to do for you when you get that word down inside of you. Because let me tell you what. When Jesus said three words, it, he was done. When he said, it is finished, he was done. He had completed the work that his father had given to him to do. And we know the story. He went into the grave and he came out of the grave victorious. But when he said, it is finished, that was all he was going to do. Our issue now is accepting what he did for us. So the first thing, your inheritance comes to you through righteousness, which is faith. But secondly, we voice God's word out of our mouth. Out of our mouth. That's what the righteousness, which is of faith, really is. We give voice to God's word out of our mouth. Now that's powerful to me this morning. That I have power through what I speak of the word that has been hidden in my heart. 
Say this with me. Say this with me this morning. Say it. Put the next slide up. Say this. I am the righteousness of God, and his word is nigh to me, even on my mouth, and I give voice to the word of God. I'm the righteousness of God, and his word is nigh to me, and even on my mouth. You don't just know it in your heart. It's not just making you a biblical intellectual. It's no good to you if you only know it and you never use it. You gotta activate it. And to activate it, you gotta use your mouth. Jacob, he, he's, a, he's in, in the army. He's a mechanic in the army. And they have books and they have ways that they do things. And Jacob said, I'm a book guy. I always have to go back to the manual and see. And I wanna follow it A to B all the way through everything that it says. But it doesn't do him any good if the manual stays shut. He never opens up and reads it and says it to himself. It doesn't do him any good just that he knows it. I'm the righteousness of God and his word is not to me even on my mouth and I give voice to the word of God. So here's what we've established so far. Are you with me? You asleep? Am I talking too loud? Okay, stay with me. I need you to open your mouth and say amen. amen. That's kind of what this message is about. Okay? So... We've been made righteous through faith. Can everybody say amen? amen? Okay. The word of God is nigh me, even in my heart and in my mouth. Can you say amen? amen? So yes, we, as the righteousness of God, give voice to God's word. Can you say amen? amen. Now, so we've established who we are and what we're to do with what he's given us. So now let's look. What happens when we begin to use it, all right? So Psalm 107 and verse 20 says this. He sent his what? And it did what? Healed them and delivered them from their destruction. What did it? That was what? Spoken. The word that was sent. The word that was put forth. It, the word that was sent healed them. He sent his word. And the word healed them. And the word delivered them. Look what the word accomplishes. It accomplished healing and deliverance from destruction. And you think, man, there ain't stuff going on in my life that's bad enough to call it destruction. Really? Wait till tomorrow. Because you don't never know, Crystal, when you're going to get the call, do you? You never know. Mr. Bobby said that, I asked him, I said, Mr. Bobby, what happened? And I love talking to Mr. Bobby. He said, he said, Shug. He'll always call me Shug. Shug. Me and Miss Sue had been all over the country. We'd been up Montana, New Mexico, everywhere. They got to Amarillo, Texas. She sat down in the car. They were going out for another day, sightseeing. They were working their way back around. We never know what destruction is going to come to us. The word that was sent provided healing and deliverance from destruction. When you speak the word as the righteousness of God and you send the word and that word accomplishes deliverance from destruction and it accomplishes healing. Then if you need healing today, then if you need healing in your finances, in your relationships, in your workplace, do you need delivered from destruction, from a destructive lifestyle, from something that's coming against you, from a horrible English class? Right? These guys started the school this week. But I want you to understand something. As a Christian, as a person that has been born again, as a person that has received everything that Jesus Christ has done for them, how often do you send the word? How often do you, under, how often do you understand it enough to put it in your mouth and load it up like bullets in a gun and pull the trigger and send it? Can you say amen? amen? What are you saying? What are you saying? Because when you send the word, we've learned the word was sent and it brought healing and deliverance from destruction. What did? Why did it happen? How can that work for me? Because I'm not powerful. It's the word. It's the word. 
that you send forth. Now, a minute ago I read this when we were doing that, the, the King of Kings song. But don't you look at this now, John 1.1. 1, 1. In the beginning, which is when? When's the beginning? In the beginning. Y'all thinking, man, he's going to have something deep. No, when was the beginning? It was the beginning. So if, if you're a creationist, that's okay. We believe the same thing. God said it, it was created. Same thing. In the beginning was the what? Word. And the word was with God, and the word was God. So now stay with me on this. When you begin to understand this, you need to understand why. And he gives us a reason what's backing the power of our spoken word. And what it is, it's the word, his word that was here from the beginning. The word that was with God, the word that was God. So we can establish from John 1.1 1, 1, that the word and God are the same. He doesn't deviate from his word. Can you say amen? He ain't going to surprise you with something that's not from his word. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. The word was God. So we're not just talking about any old book. We're talking about the word that was here from the beginning. Why? Because you cannot separate God from his word, nor can you separate the word from God. John 1, 2, and 5 says, he was with God in the beginning. Who was? Jesus, right? Through him, all things were made, and without him, nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind, the light that shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. All things were made by God, and without him, nothing was made. Now, remember... If God is the same at his, as his word, then how did God make everything? If God is the same as his word, and the word is the same as God, then how did he do something creative as God? He spoke it. He spoke it. If you got your Bibles, turn to the first chapter of Genesis. If you don't know where that is, shut your Bible. Open it up. One. <laughs> Genesis 1. Genesis 1. We're talking about how powerful the Word is when we speak the Word. Look at Genesis 1, verse 3. And God said... Verse 9, and God said. Verse 11, and God said. And you keep seeing him doing it over and over and over. In verse 20, and God said. And then in verse 21, it says, and God created. And in 24, it says, and God said. And in 26, it says, and God said. And in 29, it says, and God said. And in 31, it says, once he said it, then he saw what he had said. It's the power of the spoken word. And what an example that we have. You think, you're saying, Pastor, you are screaming. I want you to get this so bad because it will revolutionize your life and your children's life and your children's children's life when you begin to speak blessing over them and not curses. Proverbs 18, 21 says, death and life are in the power of the tongue. Our band of brothers, you guys know, y'all went through the Charles Cap book, uh, the, was it, was it, Jay? The tongue, the tongue, a creative force. Not even, not once. How many times y'all go through it? Yeah, really. But they went through it and then went through it again because they begin to get what it meant to say with your mouth and the power that came from it. You shall have whatever you say. Remember when we started a minute ago in Romans 10, 10, that confession is made unto salvation? God, how did God make it work? He said it, he said it, he said it, he said it. 
And when he said it, I tell you, we are sons and daughters of God. And if we, as sons and daughters of God, neglect speaking the word, we will never see what the word of God can do and accomplish in our own life. Amen. If you don't want to accomplish it, then don't say it. But if you speak the word, you can watch and healing will come. If you speak the word, you can watch and deliverance will come in your life. And if you speak the word of God, you can watch it make success in your life. Why? Because the way God said it. He said it and it was. He said it and it was. It's the same thing. And we've already read this a minute ago. I've read it a couple of times. But in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and all things were made by him or by the word. And now let's look at John 1, 14. Look what he says. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we, us, the disciples, all the people that were there then, we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and full of truth. Jesus was sent for us that we can behold his glory. We behold the manifestation, the living, breathing life of a man that God sent to this earth named Jesus. So here's what I want to establish this morning, and I'm working my way down. Look at this. Most Christians who are defeated in life are defeated because they believe and confess the wrong things. Because they believe and confess the wrong things. Now, what do you mean, Pastor? They start off by not believing and confessing that the Word of God can make a difference in their life. So that's the first thing, is believing that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God. So the first thing is understanding what you're confessing. And so they're defeated because they're busy saying all the wrong things because they don't believe that there's authority in the voice that God has. So they keep saying stuff. Now look at this now. They keep saying stuff that's causing the problem. And they've spoken the words of the enemy and those words that they've spoken hold them in bondage. And they don't even any, have any idea what's going on. And they keep speaking those words over and over and over. And some of you are sitting there this morning going, oh, man, we're back to having to watch what we say. I'm telling you, as Christian people, we have got to understand that there's power in what you speak. Amen. And when you have a son or a daughter that's not doing well in school, he's just dumb. She's never going to be nothing. Be careful. You and I got to understand that when you speak words of the enemy, those words are going to hold you in bondage. Why? There's life and there's death in the power of the tongue. Question. You don't have to blurt it out. So what negative or what crazy thing do you find yourself saying all the time? I'm so dumb. We are so broke. What negative, and here's even the worst. What negative and crazy things are you saying that you're giving voice to that you're listening to? Those are the very things or the seeds that are keeping you in bondage. They're responsible for where you are. You think, well, all whole time I thought it was the devil. <laughs> where do you think those words are coming from? Because let me tell you this this morning. The voice that you believe is the word you receive. The voice that you believe is the word you receive. The Bible says, whose report will you believe? Whose report will you believe? The very fact that it's, the very fact that the word even says whose report will you believe tells me that there is going to be more than one report that comes to you, that it invades your thought process. There's all kinds of things spoken to me and you about the situation that you're in. You're never going to make it. You're never going to make it. You're going to lose everything. How dumb could you be? Don't trust anybody. 
You're at your wit's end. You've waited too long. You should have done it sooner. It's too late for you. You're never going to be happy. You're never going to be free. Whose report will you believe? Whose report will you believe? Okay, let me tell you how. If you want to know whose report you're going to believe, it is the one that you are going to repeat. If you want to know whose report you're going to believe, look at whose report you keep repeating. Well, I know I'm healed, but you know what the doctor said. Whose report will you believe? And I know we struggle. I know bad things happen to good people. But I believe that when we begin to confess things with our mouth, we have to hold the word of God hostage and point him toward our circumstance. You repeat the report you believe. There's all kind of things every day saying, give up. You're cursed. You're dumb. You're stupid. You can't make it. You're just like your mom and them. The voices you repeat are the voices you receive. So I want to tell you this morning, you're the head and not the tail. You're above and not beneath. You are more than a conqueror through him who loved us. You may be in trouble, but you're going to come out of it. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord has delivered them out of them. How many of them? Many are the afflictions, but the Lord has delivered them out of them all. You're in a struggle, but you're going to get out of it. Don't give up. Don't give in. Don't give out. Don't lose your head. Don't be nervous. Don't be frustrated. Take your time. Hold your peace. The battle is not yours. It belongs to God. All of these voices are coming to you, and all those voices need to be hitting you right in the head and lifting you up, but they're not going to do it if you don't repeat them. When you speak them, when you start walking around and say, God, I thank you that I am who you say I am. I am who you say I am. I can do it, God, because you promised me in your word that I can do it. I can have it, God, because you said I can have it. I can become what I can need, need to be and all I need to be, not because I'm in the army, but because you said, God, I can become all I need to become. If God says I'm a conqueror, guess what? I'm a conqueror. I may be in a fight. It may be the 10th round, Travis. And I may have been knocked down for the last nine rounds. But if God says I'm a conqueror, when everything is said and done, I'm coming out of this because of what he said. And if he tells me I'm a conqueror, then I'm going to say with my mouth, God, I thank you that I am more than a conqueror. I am a new creation in Christ Jesus. I thank you, God, that old things have passed away and all things have become new in my life. I'm coming out of this. I'm coming out of this. Say it with me. I am coming out of this, whatever it is. When you begin to speak like that and say those things, we've already read, you seal your deliverance. You seal your deliverance from destruction when you begin to speak those things with your mouth. You speak with power. You speak with clarity. You speak to the situation. How many of you like pizza? Again. How many of you like mashed taters? See, way more hands went up on mashed taters than pizza. Why do we eat those things? To feed ourselves. To feed our physical body. And some of us are overachievers in feeding our spiritual body. Can you say amen? amen. But we eat those things because there is a hunger and a thirst. Same thing with your spiritual man. Same thing with your spiritual man. We are a spirit being living inside of a body and a soul. 
but we're a spirit being. And your spirit man is screaming for not just mashed taters and pizza, but for the word of the living God. You see, my body responds to nutrients when I put them in my mouth. The same thing. Your spiritual man will respond when you begin to speak those things. Now let's look one last thing and I'm done. Proverbs 6, 1 and 2 says this. My child, if you have put up a security for a friend's debt or agreed to guarantee the debt of a stranger, you have trapped yourself by your agreement and you are caught by what you said. He's telling you, Christians, the reason that you're in the mess that you're in, you're trapped by the words of your mouth. Oh, you're thinking, man, that's a bunch of junk. No, this is for real. There's life. If, there's, if the Bible says there's life and death in the power of the tongue, then guess what? There's life and death in the power of the tongue. Words are so important. The Bible says you don't want to be caught by what you said. Look at this. Faith-filled words will put you over, but fear-filled words will defeat you every time. Every time, every time, every time. Words are the most powerful thing in the universe. In fact, words are responsible for the universe even being created. And God said, and God said, and God said. They're responsible for everything. So in your life and my life, we have a great example in the Heavenly Father. God, I want a difference made in my life. So how did God do it? He said it. And it was done. And then the Bible says, not only did he say it, then he saw it. If you want to see yourself through whatever you're going through, begin to say it. And use the authority that God has given you in his word. And begin to speak it over you and your children. And you think, you say, Pastor... I don't, I don't have any clue how to do that. I don't have any clue how to do that. I, I, I don't know how to begin to confess the word because I really don't know the word. Okay, given. That's cool. Begin to listen to some things. Begin to hide those things down in your heart. Begin to change your way of thinking. And then begin to confess those things. Get them in your mind. Get them in your heart. So that at a moment's notice, they'll come out. You're dumb. No, I'm not. I have the mind of Christ. I'm a brand new creation. I have, a, I have a devotion, and I've used some of these before. but And it's a confession every day for me. And I read it out loud to myself every day. So if you want to know where and how to begin to confessing over you, buy you a book of confessions. Buy you a daily devotional that has confessions in it. Mine is a book that, that I use every single day, and this is probably my third or fourth time through this book. I just keep using the same book as my confession every morning because it's so powerful. And it's called 365 Days of Power by Rick Renner. But today, look at this, what it says. This was, my, this was my confession and my prayer for today. Lord, I'm so glad you don't choose only the intellectually brilliant Kind of brings you where it needs to be, don't it, TJ? You're looking for anyone who has a heart to be used by you. Well, that's me, Lord. I want you to use me. I offer you everything I have. I offer you my good points, my weak points, my gifts, my talents, and everything else that I am. Because, God, I just want you to use me for your glory. I've told you before, but today I'm telling you again, God that I want you to take my life and do something wonderful with me. And today I pray this in Jesus' name. And look, here's, here was my confession for this morning. This was 7, seven o'clock this morning. I confess that I am exactly the kind of person that God can use. God is not looking to carry out great victories through my life. His choice is not based on beauty or lack of beauty, talent or lack of talent, Education or lack of education, a diploma 
or a lack of diploma. No, God has chosen me because I have a heart that is right before him. And today I declare this in the name of Jesus. I spoke that to myself this morning before I ever walked in this place. Because I'm thinking, God, I can't woo them with what I know. But I can woo them with the word. So I ask you over the past few weeks and months, be a doer. Be a doer of the word. Begin to renew your mind in the way that you're thinking. And do it constant, daily, weekly. Hook up to the water supply, the living water. And then begin to say it over you and your children and your grandchildren and your children's children and your workplace. What a difference it would make if you walked into your office every single morning and had a confession for everybody in there. Hey, folks, gather around. I got something I want us to say today. We here at Walmart. I mean, really. What a difference it would make to one individual to tell them, you know what? I know you're struggling today, but you know what the word says about you? It says you're beautifully and wonderfully made. You'll never know what that spoken word would mean to that one person. Will you stand with me this morning? God, we thank you for today. We thank you for what we've seen and heard in this house today. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are, you tell us that we are more than conquerors through Christ who loved us. So God, I thank you that we are the righteousness of God in Christ. I thank you that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. I thank you that we are the head and we're not the tail. I thank you that we are victors and not victims. So God, I just ask you today as we close this service, Lord, I ask you that if there's anyone in the the house today that has never accepted Jesus Christ as the Lord of their life and does not understand what it means to say, I am the righteousness of God in Christ, I ask you, Lord, that they would give their heart and life to the Lord right now. If there's anybody that's never accepted Jesus and does not even know what that is, God, I ask you that today would be their day and that they would start this day on the 15th of August by confessing you. Let their first confession be, I confess the Lord Jesus Christ. I publicly make a confession with my mouth of the Lord Jesus Christ. So Lord, I ask you if there's anybody listening today at home or is there anybody in this house today that has never accepted Jesus Christ as the Lord of, your li- of their life, I ask you to let them do it right now in Jesus' name. Anybody in the house? Lord, I thank you that we are your righteousness. I thank you that you've given us one another, Lord Jesus, to coexist, to co-labor in this thing we call life here on this earth. I thank you for every man and woman and boy and child that is in this place that are making a a difference for the kingdom. And we ask you, God, this day to allow us to make more difference than ever before when we line up our confession with what the word says. So we thank you, Jesus, this day for everything that you have done for us, for keeping us, for giving us your Holy Spirit to comfort us. We ask you this day, Lord, we choose this day whom we're gonna serve. But as for me, Lord, in our house, we're gonna serve you. And everybody said in the name of Jesus, amen. Look at somebody and tell them, L-G-L-E-O, loving God and loving each other.